Okay, I will come back to this timing point that you have mentioned, China. But let me now bring in Patricia Mukhim uh, uh, also in. Patricia, there are gun battles that are waging out of Manipur. And nothing has been done to stop it so far. Does it speak about the state machinery, also the machinery at the center failing miserably? Or as there are allegations that have been made that there are severe attempts that are being made to drive out tribals from out of the state. What is your view on this? See, first of all, I do not want to politicize this issue and say this government has done this and mm. that government has done that. The, the point here is that the rule of law had collapsed mm. right from about a week after the incident of 3rd May. Mm. There was no rule of law. Yeah. The police were compromised. The arms were looted. Mm. And all that the chief minister could say is, please return those arms and we will not take action. Think mm. about it. Mm. And there are arms aplenty floating around in Manipur, which is why you have this culture of violence. Why, how and why did these, where did these arms come from? Mm. You know, I think we need to question this. And why does it take an outrage of this nature for you to call us and debate this on television? Mm. Because I, we have been saying the, the, the violence is ongoing, but uh, the media had all but forgotten Manipur you know, especially the so-called national media. Mm. So the, the problem again is to ask, why has the rule of law collapsed? And you have about 60,000 uh, uniformed personnel from the security forces, army and all that. And yet they were unable to contain the violence mm. because you have what you call the Mera Paibis, the women's groups that come out and prevent the army or the paramilitary from arresting uh, militants who have been, uh, you know, they, they've been wreaking violence. And when they're about to be arrested, the, the women are shielding them and saying, no, no, these are our defenders. So you have drawn a very, very straight line of, of um, differences between the hills and the valley. And it seems to me that, uh, you know, this is, a, this is a point of no return. Okay. Because... Uh, there's so much of displacement of the hill tribes, the Kukis and um, the, the Kuki Zo people. They are in Meghalaya, they are in Mizoram, they are all over. And it seems to me that this is a targeted uh, ethnic cleansing mm. so that, you know, perhaps the people from the valley will then get to go and settle in the hills. I'm not very sure, but okay. the question is, why has it been allowed to sink to this low? Mm. And that incident that surfaced only yesterday, yes, it has shaken the, you know, the consciousness of the nation. But why did it take so long for anyone to be arrested? Mm. To say that if we arrest every, if we arrest the wrong person, this will happen. No, no, that is wrong. The only reason why this person was arrested because it is because of the outrage that surfaced since yeah. yesterday. Mm. Many women across uh, who I have spoken to have said that we just could not even sleep at the, yes. you know, the horror of it all, the the indignity of it all is just so shocking. Mm. So, and, and then there is this question of why the Prime Minister has remained silent for all of 77 days. It only took the, the Supreme Court to take cognizance of this case yeah. for the Prime Minister to speak up. Mm. This is not done. This is just not done. We are part of the country. How can one part of the country suffer its lowest approbation and then only have the Prime Minister come out and speak on its behalf? We'll talk about we the Prime Minister's speech in just a bit. Let me bring in uh, Ms. Nirmal Kaur in on this. Uh, considering we're talking about uh, the police action, Ms. Kaur, I'd like to understand this one thing, that this is a family of five that we were talking about. They were being escorted out of where the violence was being perpetrated and the mob really took them away from the police clutches. There was a zero FIR that was filed uh, after 14 days of when the violence actually happened on these women. And here we are not just talking about groping or probably parading naked. There was a gang rape that happened, also a murder. What and why do you think that the chief minister of the state, despite all of this, is only saying now that the video is viral that he has only got to know about it through Twitter. And what does it say about the police action? See, the thing is, the, um, what the Prime Minister has said in Parliament today really articulates the anguish and uh, agony of the whole nation. You know, he's articulated the words which all of us are feeling in our hearts and mm. we are unable to express it. 
and I think across the board, across party lines, everyone's condemned such a shameful incident. And definitely lacunae are there, but it is not that it is an overnight kind of. This video itself is more over two months old. Somebody was holding on to the video till the parliament is convened. Uh, on the eve of the parliament, you know, mm. session, they will release it mm. so that it goes viral. If you have information on a crime, it should be immediately reported. Any evidence you have. Whoever had this video and made it viral yesterday, I mean about 24 hours ago or whenever the timing was, he was waiting for this opportunity. Saying exactly what a member of the BJP also said, Mr. Ravi Shankar Prasad. Yeah. Shaina, I'll come to uh, I'll come to that point, but don't you yeah. think it is just doing away with the exact point that we're trying no, no, to no. actually no, no. make what here? If we go ahead and question that timing, and we say that we have to also understand that there was an internet ban in the state. Internet ban doesn't mean that you know this. They, I mean the videos managed mm. to go viral. Internet is still banned. That means somebody was holding on and making it a, I mean, to get political mileage of the incident instead of seeing it as a pure and simple crime, which it is. Neither the police, nor the establishment, nor the detractors, nor the, and I think uh, the highest is the feeling of the Chief Justice of India, the Honorable Chief Justice of India, hmm. has said that, you know, women being used as an instrument, as a means of revenge, yeah. retribution. Hmm. What is the two, two ethnic communities are fighting? Hmm. I mean, why should we humiliate each other as women? To make a point, oh, we are, we are one, over, one up over you or something. Mm -hmm. Why are women the instruments? Why should they have to wear the brunt of the anger of the communities or whatever it is that is being played out there? Mm -hmm. And this has not become, I mean, this situation has not developed overnight. Mm -hmm. You know, in Urdu, there is a couplet, Lamho ne khata ki thi, sadiyo ne saja pai. So this has been brewing, brewing for decades and decades and decades. Mm -hmm. What have we done? The opium growing in Manipur, everyone knows. Mm -hmm. What have we done about it over the decades? How people from outside were brought how, you know, certain restrictions were made, mm. how the outsiders are jabardasti brought and made to settle there. It has been brewing since then. I'm mm. not justifying this incident. I mean, I'm, my hand, head hangs in shame along with the whole nation at this sad incident. Mm. But at the same time, it has not happened overnight. And whoever was holding on to this video to, for two and a half months or something to, you know, get political mileage out of it. And I, this is, I'm surely this is only tip of the iceberg. Many such incidents must have taken place. And I'm, I'm sure, I mean, I hope that they all you come miss, out. And miss Kaur, I'm afraid, I don't know, you're calling it, to, you know, somebody trying to actually garner political mileage out of the video. But there are also instances where uh, the police action, of course, is being questioned. Yes. The superintendent of police in the area uh, is being said is belonging to the dominant Mehtai community. And that's why there was an attempt to bury the story because it doesn't look good on the police. What you will know, you say about that? The thing is, when we join police, we take an oath by the constitution. The way, similarly, the, the way all the politicians and mantris and the executive mm. does. That whatever, I am born a Sikh, but in a communal right, I don't have to favor the Sikhs. Mm. I have to just pick up the criminals and the miscreants and the wrongdoers. Mm. So identifying with the community or, you know, after you become a policeman or after you become a minister mm. or after you become a, you know, an executive position, you are the government and the government is impartial and they can only understand one thing, which is the constitution of India and the law of the land which is our IPC, CRPC, Evidence Act and all the other local laws and the body of laws that is there. Mm. So, you know, to have an identity, even after I become a policeman, it is the utmost uh, kind of, you know, I would say it's a travesty. Okay. Lalita ji, let me bring you in here. You've been quietly listening to all the speakers on the panel. I'd like to understand this one thing. And Nimrat ji, also, Nimrat ji,